I know that he lives in mine every single day. And I hope that he lives in yours just the same. Uh, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead uh, and turn to Luke chapter 8, verse 43. Luke eight forty three. Like I, I, I briefly mentioned, our pastor and his wife, um, he is out, they are out traveling, so I get to take care of everything this morning. I told him, I hope I don't burn anything down. The church seems to still be up. No one seems to be mad, so so far we're doing great. Of course, you probably can guess how this morning went. A few people are missing, and everything goes downhill from there. But I will say, I couldn't get the camera to work. Turns out that was my fault, not the camera's fault. So leave it to the morning that we t- we're, we're flying it solo this morning. Uh, and I'm being told that the children can be dismissed right now. Let them go to their class. Because the, the couple that normally do children are also pastor's daughter. They're gone. Since she, since Bethany hates for me to, I'm going to say she's beautiful, my beautiful, lovely wife. Um, has, has so graciously filled in. Um, but if you have in your Bible, Luke chapter 8, verse 43, say amen. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stanched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I perceived that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she, had not, she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. I know we all know this story. I know we've all probably heard 101 sermons about the woman with the issue of blood. We all know that no one really knows what the issue of blood was, but we all know that instantly she was healed. We all know that she was an outcast. We all know that she had to work, crawl, work her way through the crowd to Jesus just to touch the hem of his garment. And in in that moment, she was healed instantly. But it, instead, instead of talking about how we could be like the woman or instead of talking about how God heals, I kind of want to put it all into one ball this morning because I want to start with historical context. In Scripture, in verse 44, it says, the border of his garment. If you look in the Greek, it, mean, it says she touched the tassel of his cloak. Historically, men had an outer cloak. We know how biblical characters, they had an outer cloak, and it was more like a a covering, and then their garments underneath. Well, in uh, Numbers 15, 37, God told Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and and they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for fringe, that ye may look unto it, and remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do them. And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye use to go a a wrong. That ye may remember and do all of my commandments, and be holy unto your God. So historically... Before, if, if any of you are familiar with a prayer shawl, what, before there was ever a prayer shawl, it was more like a, a larger cloak that they would have worn. And then through history, as time has gone on, it has gone into what we know, it has morphed into what we know as the prayer shawl. 
So it would have been a lot bigger than this, but he would have worn it somewhat like this. And as you can see, it had the strings hanging down, the blue threads, like God told Moses. And that's what she would have touched. She would have seen him. She would have heard word on the streets that said, Jesus heals. People that even touch his clothes are healed. And she knew that if she could just get to his clothing, she would be made whole. So see, usually when we, think, when we read Scripture, we read the different, uh, the different versions. It says he touched clothes. She, she didn't touch his jacket. She didn't touch his pants. She would have touched this string hanging down on each corner because there's a string on four corners. And as she reached up, she grabbed a tassel and she was made whole. So see, another part of that context that I want to bring out is if, you, if you've never studied the prayer shawl, what we have now is a prayer shawl. It's not, it's not a big garment. They make different sizes, but, and they have different writings in Hebrew on the collar. But for the most part, it's a prayer shawl that most Jews will wear to this day. It still has the thread. It still has the tassels. But if you look on each corner, the tassels are longer. In Hebrew, these are called the seat seats. I'm not I'm bad at math, so I'm not going to pull out too much math if you are anything like me, but I'm going to give you a short little lesson of Hebrew. Each letter in the Hebrew alphabet adds up to a certain number. What they have for A is like one, what they have for B is like two. And it goes on to 10, and then it goes 20, 30, 40, and then it goes to 90, and 100, 200. Are we following on the math? Easy enough? Perfect. If you take the letters, because Hebrew has no vowels, if you take the letters that make up the T, Z, Z, and then the T, it's 90 plus 10 plus 90 plus 90 and 400, which is equals 600. And then if you look, if you can see, it's, it's probably hard to see up close, but each, between each blue thread is a double knot. There are five double knots. And then on these strings, there's four on one side and four on the other. That makes eight. So if you add all of that up, it equals 613, just like the 613 commandments that God gave to the Jews to follow. See, just like God told Moses... She was looking at the prayer shawl and she was seeing the 613 commandments of how she should live her life for Christ. But see, also in those 613 commandments, it tells what is unclean and what is clean. So in that same moment, in the, heat, the moment that she saw the law, she saw that she was unclean. Because Scripture tells us that she, if you had any blood issue like she had, you were automatically deemed unclean just like lepers were made unclean. So this woman probably had to live in her own little area of the city or outside of the city gates, just like the lepers and those who were not allowed to be close, because the law said that whatever she touched or came in contact with would be unclean with her. So see, when she saw the hem of his garment, she saw that she was unclean. She saw the law that left her out, that excluded her, that said she couldn't be around anyone. And yet in that same moment, she saw a man who came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. Because she knew that when she touched the hem of his garment, she would be healed. She believed that the moment she touched him, all her problems would vanish. Most prayer shawls today are white, similar to this. The main color is white. And a lot of people who, a lot of the Jewish studies say that white represents mercy or forgiveness. Because scripture says, your sins are like crimson, but you are made white as snow. Some even say that when she, 
the different visions of Jesus when he was, the, the mountain, when he shone like light, all of his clothes became white. So some teach that what Jesus wore, what Christ wears is white, we should do the same and wear white. And then, as you can tell, the, the tassels have blue. Some Jewish studies teach that that is from Ezekiel 1 and 26 that says, above the firmament over their heads was the likeness of a throne. In appearance, like a sapphire. So, so, so some Jewish teaching that that blue is to represent the throne of grace, the throne of God. Because what is at the throne? God and his presence. So see, the woman that, also, that saw 613 commandments of what she could and could not do, she saw, what she saw was that you are unclean, but she also saw purity. She saw the blue that represented his spirit on the throne, his presence, because Jesus was the Word made flesh. Jesus was God in person, as a man. So in the same tallit that she would have seen, that said you're unclean and unworthy, you must be left alone to die, was the same tallit, was the same person that said, come to me, all you who are, who are weary and need rest. Come to me, for you will be made whole. Come and see the Spirit of God. The woman with the issue of blood saw Jesus, and she knew that the law made her unclean. But she also knew that word on the street said, as Jesus walked around... He healed who he came in contact with. He touched lepers. He touched blinded eyes. He touched deaf ears. He rose from the dead. He rose people from the dead. And she knew that she would be healed if she touched him. Even though she had seen every single doctor, it says she had spent all of her, for, all of her money. She had seen all the doctors. Some even say that she traveled what they would have said the world, what the towns, the, the cities. She traveled miles and miles to see every doctor she could afford, only to be told there was nothing we could do. Only to be told that there's, we, we don't really understand. We don't know what your, we, we, Scripture doesn't tell us what the issue of blood was, but for their day, she probably, if she spent every single dime she had, she probably saw the best physician she could afford, only to be told that there's nothing we can do for you. When you study Hebrew and Greek in Scripture, I read Numbers 15 that says, put on, your, put on the corner a tassel. The same word for corner in Numbers 15 is the same word used in Hebrew for wings in Malachi 4 verse 2 that says, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Which is the same exact word used in Psalms 91 verse 4 for wings. It says, He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. So anyone that spoke, see, they spoke Aramaic. They read the Old Testament. Well, they didn't have, they didn't consider it the Old Testament like we do now. But that's what they read. They would have seen it. And she would have known the same words that were used for the garments and the tassels on the corners were the same words that were used for the wings that she could take refuge under, church. See, uh, his would have been a lot bigger, so it probably would have been over his shoulders and on four corners like this. Because Jews believe that if you put it, you put it over your shoulders, because it is a representation of the Spirit of God. 
So see, she also knew that if she could get to the tassels, if she could get under the arms of his tallit, she would be under the wings for protection. She would be under the wings for healing. And she knew that if she could just get to these tassels, she would be touching the wings that could heal every infirmity in her body. Another look at words outside of English. This time we look at Greek. The same word used for virtue in the chapter, in the verse we read, chapter 8, where Jesus said, the virtue has left, is the same word that you use in power, as power, in Acts 1.8. You've probably heard ministers speak on it, dunamis, Acts 1, 8, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, Acts 1, verse 8. See, when he said virtue left his body, he did not mean that his character, what we use the word virtue in English is character, as upright, as, as, as being kind. That didn't leave his body. Virtue, he felt power leave his body. See, in, in Acts verse 1, 8, it's talking about when the Spirit shall come upon you, you shall have power to go out and make disciples. And that same power is what left Jesus that day. So church, what is the point to all this? When you need healing, seek and run after Jesus. When you need protection, it's in his wings. When you need deliverance, when you need God to do what only God can do, it's in his wings, church. When you've spent all your resources on physicians, on medicine, on doctors, on psychiatrists, on they have this thing called cupping where they stick cups and it sucks some, I don't really know what it does. I'll be honest. But it's, a lot of people say it helps. But the point is this. Whether you do weird doctor things or normal doctor things and they prescribe you Tylenol or Advil, I'm not saying that medicine doesn't have its place. I'm not saying that medicine and doctors cannot do good things. I believe that God gave wisdom and knowledge and the, the ability to study two doctors for them to do it and do it well. Do you believe that? But I also believe that God can do more than whatever physicians may say, think, or do. See, doctors can only take... Bethany is learning how to take x-rays and CTs and all the other letters and scans. All, I'm not... Okay, I don't want this to sound demeaning. All that she can do is scan something and give it to the doctor to read. The doctor cannot change the scan that he just took. Bethany cannot take, Bethany cannot change the fact that she just took a scan of a broken leg. She just has to report the picture of a broken leg. But see, in his wings, there is healing. There is shelter in his wings that can fix broken bones. They can take shriveled up hands, they can take legs that don't walk and heal them to move. In his wings, he can open blinded eyes. He can pour out finances for whatever you need. The presence of God in the Old Testament was in the Holy of Holies and in the New Testament was the Holy of Holies. You had the outer court, the inner court, and the Holy of Holies, and that's where God's Spirit was. And only the priest could go in there until Jesus, the high priest, came and died on a cross and tore the veil. And in that moment, it signified that the veil was torn to take the Holy of Holies into the whole world. That God's Spirit may flow through us, in us, and around us. Because of that, in his tassels, in his wings, there is the Spirit of God.
all you have to do when you look at this tassel, it's just a little bit of string. Some may be blue, some may be all white, some may be all black, some may be all white. But the same tassel that says you are condemned, you are put to death, you should be stoned, you are unclean, you should be left alone. The same tassel that says you are unworthy. This little bit of string that reminds us, or in, in, in the Jewish times, in the biblical times, it would remind them to think of the Torah. So the same thing that sends you to the Word, the same book, the same scripture that says all men are unclean. There is sin in our hearts as human beings. The same scripture that says that is the same scripture that says God came to give life and life more abundantly. The same scripture says that God sent his only son to die on a cross because he loved you. Sometimes we read the whole world that he sent his only son, but see, we forget the whole world includes us. The whole world is me. The whole world is you. The whole world is your neighbor. The whole world is the person sitting beside you. The same scripture that says you should be put to death says God sees us through Christ. It says his mercy renews every morning. So all you have to do is reach out and touch a little bit of string and that's all you'll ever need. Scripture says, taste and see that the Lord is good. All you have to do to taste is grab a string. It's not hard. It's not, it's not hard. Sometimes we turn Christianity into this long, ridiculous amount of things that we have to do. Thou shalt do this, and thou shalt not do this, and thou shalt unto thee, and thee and thou, and every other thing. Jesus came that see you could touch that tassel. Jesus came so that we might be like Adam and could walk in the cool of the day with the Spirit of God. Jesus came so that instead of following a bunch of rules, we can have a relationship. Because it's not about what we can't do, it's about what we can do. And we can run after Jesus with all of our heart. We can run after Jesus with all of our strength. We can run after Jesus with everything. Even if you're like the woman and you have no energy. Because in Scripture, when it says she had an issue of blood, if you study that, even though we don't know what it is, she continued to bleed somewhere. And if you know anything about blood is that when you bleed a lot, when blood does not stay in your body, you become anemic. And what does anemia do? It makes you tired. It makes you weak. It wears you out. So see, she didn't have very much energy to go after this tassel. She didn't have very much energy to crawl through a crowd of people that bustled and hustled and pushed and shoved and wanted to get close to Jesus. But she knew that if she could just use all the energy she had, see church, it doesn't matter how much energy you have, all you have to do is get to the hem of his garment. Because once you get there, all the energy you had left, all the sickness that you had is gone. The little bit of energy you had before will be replenished when you touch Jesus. See, just like that woman, she was weak. She had spent all of her money. She, she didn't know where else to go. But with that one little string, she was made whole. But at the same time, there were a bunch of people pushing around Jesus, pushing around, getting to Jesus, touching Jesus. And the disciples even said, Lord, everybody's pushing you. I know people are pushing me. I know people are touching me. 
but nothing's left. No virtue has left. Scripture tells us there are going to be people that say, Lord, Lord, did I not pray? Did I not heal the sick in your name? Did I not cast out demons? And the Lord will say, depart, for I never knew you. We don't need to be a group of people that run after Jesus just because it's the latest fad, just because we want to be in the certain crowd or the certain group or go to a certain church or we want to fit in. We have got to be in that group of people that will be a remnant that run after this garment to touch Jesus. Because church, let me also tell you this. When you touch Jesus, Jesus does not do... Does, Jesus blesses you, gives it to you to go through you. See, if you, if you look in Scripture, it says what you pray in my name will happen. You have to pray according to His will. How do you know His will? Study Scripture. Run after this tassel. Touch this tassel. Hang out in His presence. It takes time. But what does every relationship take? Time. And hard work. And effort. And patience. But so often, what happens when we use all of our time and energy and use all of our patience? Where do we get some of the greatest blessings, some of the greatest healings, some of the greatest miracles happen? Because when you're all spent, God has barely just begun. In your weakness, he is made strong. So we can't be people hustling and bustling around Jesus just because we're doing this, we're doing that. And I don't know about you, but that scares me. Am I really running after Christ? For Christ? Am I seeking his face or am I seeking his hands? Because church, if we're seeking God, if we're seeking these tassels so that we can tell everybody we touched a tassel, you're going to hear, depart from me, for I never knew you. If you're running after these tassels so that you can have a nice Lexus, BMW, Mercedes, depart from me, for I never knew you. If you're running after these tassels, so that you can say, oh, look at the house that God gave me. Yes, I believe that God gives and he takes away. It rains on the just and the unjust. But if you give to this... Oh, oh we're going to go there. If you pay tithes, if you pay offering, if you give money to this church with the hopes that you can control this church, you can take your money back. If you give your money to this church or any other ministry and expect, okay, now hear what I'm saying. God will bless when you give. I'm not saying not to give with understanding of blessings. But if your whole purpose is to give so that you can get something back, you can take your money, put it back in your billfold. I believe that when we are truly running after Christ, truly looking at Scripture, truly looking at these tassels, truly wanting to hide under the wings of protection and guidance, we will find those wings. I was going to use Bethany for this, but since she's not here, in these wings... In these tassels, what would happen if you come up to me? You're wrapped. And just in a talit is the Spirit of God. You have been wrapped in the Spirit of God. See? It's not about running to tassels because they're the corner. It's not about running to the tassels. It's because what this tassel is attached to. It's what's in the tassels. It's what's in the prayer shawl. It's what it means. I told Bethany the other day, prayer, prayer shawls are really awesome if you study them. If you don't know what they mean, I'll be honest, it's just a blanket. But when you study it, 
you'll understand that there's a reason why Jews take the prayer shawl and put it over their head and recite a prayer. They're being covered. There's a reason they kiss the tassels. There's a reason they hold it close and recite a prayer. Do you know that every knot, every thread that is put into this, a Jew has to recite a certain prayer before he threads it, before he ties it, before he dyes it, before he does anything, he has to recite a prayer over it. And before they ever put it on, they'll recite a prayer. When you run to this tassel, church, and I know we're on Facebook Live, when you run to this tassel, you will find the presence of God. You will find covering and shelter. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. He is near to the brokenhearted. Just like the woman, she wasn't just healed. Jesus didn't say you're healed. Jesus said you are made whole. But what did it? Her faith. Run after God with your faith. Run after God with all that you have. Run after God believing that all things are possible through Christ who gives us strength. Run after God knowing that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the author and finisher of our faith. The same God that created the universe in Genesis is the same God that will rule and reign in Re Revelations when his son comes back and gets us and takes us to a new heaven, New Jerusalem. The same God will wrap you in his wings. And there's no stipulations. Just run. We often hear stories of atheists, of people trying everything and then they running to God and finding out that God was there all along. I've heard of so many stories where people ministered to someone, where ministers have preached or talked to someone at a coffee shop or one of their friends and said, just try God. Just try it. Read scripture. One day, two days, three days, read it. Pray. Reach out to God and see what happens. And every time, God is right there. So church, this morning as, as we end, as I round it, as I, as I wrap it all up, I want to encourage you. Run after God this morning. Run after God with faith. Run after him whether you have energy or finances or whether you don't. Whether you have to army crawl on your arms and legs, if you're watching by Facebook, we're so glad that you could join us. But I want to encourage you just like everyone in this room by saying that God is right there waiting for you to run after him. He's waiting for you to touch the tassels, the hem of his garment. He's waiting for you. Because I say it a lot. God never pulls back his hands. We're the ones that pull back. We're the ones that run away, not God. We're the one who give up, not God. So whether you've never met Christ before, or you know him and you want to hang out in his presence. Whether you want to touch the hem of his garment, whether you want to be wrapped in his wings, I want to invite you again and we'll pray. I want to invite you because in that one little tassel, there is wholeness she wasn't healed physically. She was healed mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. She was made whole. Because the law that once said she was unclean said she was a normal person. It said she was clean now. So what once wrote you off, what once said you should go to hell, there's love and forgiveness when you touch the hem of his garment. So come. It doesn't matter.